This truly is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome everyone here, both both in the pews and those that are joining us in various ways virtually on this wonderful Christ the King Sunday as we prepare to enter the season of Advent. I do want to just begin by making a note that um, uh, unfortunately um, Arwen it was ill today, so we're, we're going to have to postpone the baptism. So we'll, we'll follow the order of service as we go through, except when we get to that part, we will skip to the, um, to the affirmation of faith and, and the hymn after. So I'll, I'll remind you when we get there, but just wanted to, to give you a heads up. But also just say that um, every single Sunday, as, as we come forth, we do come forth and, uh, and the, even the placement, the flow of our servants and the, the placement of our, of our sanctuary reminds us that we are passing through our baptism to the table and then back out into the world. So we do so every Sunday, coming forth to, to the, the font and the, and the table. So we're going to continue in that, in that spirit today as we remember our baptisms um, in, in worship today. We do have a, a number of announcements. Um, first of all, just a, a reminder that next Sunday is our 130th birthday. Wahoo! So let's, we're going to celebrate and just remind everyone to, to be sure to wear your T-shirts um, and um, also, uh, we just have lots of things going on. That, that December 10th, that following Sunday at 4 p.m., we're having the interfaith service at the uh, League City Civic Center. We have about 10 different faith traditions that are going to be coming together uh, for uh, in a celebration, or, or uh, not celebration, but a prayer for peace um, in the midst of all the conflict that we have around the globe. And it's really going to be a wonderful time of gathering as, as all these traditions came together. They, like, we want it to be more than just prayer. We want to really live as we do um, in this community and peace together and to mark that with a time of, of fellowship afterwards. So each tradition is going to bring a, a food to it, and we're going to have a little time of, of gathering and, and just being community together as, as, as part of that as well, which I think will really make it rich and wonderful. So hopefully all of you can uh, mark your calendars and make it uh, December 10th, Sunday at 4 p.m. at the at the League City Civic Center. So the announcement's in there, but just look forward to, to that. Um, and also this Friday is uh, our Five Arts Friday, and um, so we want to, uh, for the Advent kickoff for that, and that's going to be an exciting time. We're going to have some more announcements on that. So um, I think someone from the worship committee was going to come forward and speak. Okay. If you want to go ahead and come forth, and then, and then Kathy will, uh, Dixon will follow with an announcement coming to us from, um, from our mission as well. Thank you. Good morning. It's starting to look like Christmas. So we're going to uh, launch off our first Advent Five Arts. It's going to be an intergenerational family uh, event. Uh, going to try to touch on a lot of the different arts. Uh, when you come in, you'll be able to eat some of the delicious treats by our culinary artist-in-chief, uh, Jennifer Carr. Uh, we'll have some craft stations, um, some games, and then we're going to do an impromptu audience-driven play. Well, you'll pick your part, you'll get a costume, and it's going to be interspersed with all of our favorite Christmas carols. So it's really going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join us at 5 o'clock for the snacks, the crafts, and, of course, especially the play. Hope to see you there. Good morning. Um, my name is Kathy Dixon. I am the elder for the mission team. And I want to thank everybody first for participating last week in our event that we had. I hear it was a wonderful event, and I hope you all enjoyed yourself. We actually have some left, oh, excuse me, some pieces of uh, wonderful um, items that we have still on sale. Please come by. Um, Anya is there, and you can see what we have. Um, and, um, but I want to ask today, um, we are um, looking for your help. We are doing a survey, and um, it'll be coming out through constant contact and through emails. All you have to do is click on the link and fill out a few questions. There are less than 10 questions, um, but we will use this information in our 
um, upcoming retreat, to look at things that we're doing as a mission of the church and where we're going to be going forward. Um, if you remember back a couple years, we did a, another survey, um, and we did this as a part of the Health and Wellness Committee. And from that survey, we came up with what is now known as touchstones. So what we do with this information is that we actually use it. So your information is vital to us. So please click on the link, fill it out. Um, if you don't have a computer, I will be having um, computers here um, on next Sunday and the next couple of Sundays. Um, we are going to be doing this through December 17th. Um, I think that um, if you have to handwrite it, remember that's meaning that I'm going to have to go like this to put it in. So if you want to make sure you're getting the information the way you want it, please try to put it in electronically for me. But if you don't have a computer, let us know at the office and we'll make something available to you. So please, um, please help me out and get us the information so I can take it to our retreat in January and we can plan the next couple years and what we're looking to do. Thank you very much. Please stand as you're able. Make a joyful noise to God. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. God made us. We belong to God. Give thanks to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, we give you thanks for the grace that is at work in us through, the, through our gift of baptism, the sign of, of your threefold name, the communion of your faithful people, the promise of your glorious realm. By the power of your Holy Spirit poured out upon us in baptism, let your grace and peace grow in us until we gather at your heavenly throne to give you thanks and praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let's join in singing hymn number 363, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
Thank you. Please be seated. Christ rules over us, seated at the right hand of God. This is the same Christ who came to be with us, to laugh with us, cry with us, break bread with us, be one with all of us. Therefore, we approach the throne with boldness, knowing that Christ will hear our confession. Join me now in our prayer of confession. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have done something different. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have given you food. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would have taken you in. If we had known it was you, Lord, we would not have passed you by, but we did. Too often we make excuses for not taking care of each other. We have ignored your commandments to love and care. We do not desire forgiveness, but we ask for it anyway and ask you to help us change our ways. Now let us go to God in silent confession. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, do you hear it? Do you hear the good news? God seeks the lost, brings back those who have strayed, binds up the injured, and strengthens the weak. We are forgiven and restored. Thanks be to God. Peace of Christ be with you. 
Let us share the peace. the children to come down and you're gonna have to turn this way Oliver guys if you'll come up here because you're gonna participate today I've got something for you to do so you gotta look this way guys perfect good morning and everybody have a good Thanksgiving oh wonderful I'm so glad to hear that so for the last five weeks, we've been talking about Psalm 23. And during those times, we have talked about belonging, protectiveness. Does anybody remember what that means? Being safe. Protect people. Yep, being protected, being safe. Good. I think we probably know this one. Love. And let's see here goodness and finally another kind of big one abundance does anybody remember what that is having more, than you need. having more than you need exactly for sure so what I would like to do is I want to pass these cards out and I'm going to read the 23rd Psalm and I want you to hold up the card if you think that it's part of belonging part of protectiveness part of love Nope, you're going to just kind of hold them goodness and abundance. And you get, Oliver, why don't you, there we go. All right, that's fine. Perfect. So I'm going to read it. And oh, and also just so you know, there's no right or wrong answer. This, is, this isn't a test. There's no grades. And there could be more than one of these cards that need to be held up each time. So if somebody else holds up a card, you don't have to go, oh, I can't hold up mine because they already held up theirs. That's not true. There could be... All the cards could be held up at one time, or just two or three, or just one. Okay, are you ready? All right, so this is the end of the 23rd, of our talking about the 23rd Psalm, so we're going to review it, and you tell me if it fits in with any of these things that we just talked about. The Lord is my shepherd, so he's telling us that we have a relationship. We are his sheep, and he's our shepherd. What do you think that sounds like? Love, like belonging, very good, and he's protecting, and goodness, excellent. I shall not want... Oh, abundance, very good. He is our source and we will not lack for anything because the sheep relies on that shepherd and he takes care of us. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. We can rest, good, protect him, all of them, excellent. Um, he restores my soul. That's kind of like healing, goodness, and belonging, good. So the shepherd binds and mends and heals his sheep. He leads me in the path of righteousness. So he's guiding me and leading me. Excellent. Very good. For his name's sake, which is our purpose in life, to honor and glorify him in all that we do. Nice. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So we're going to have trials and we're going to have some difficulties, but he's going to always be there with us. Goodness. Yeah, maybe he's protecting us while we're doing that. Good. I will fear no evil. That's protection, and the sheep, <laughs> because they have a shepherd to protect them. Very good. For thou, for thou art with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. For sure, love, yes, goodness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, very good. He's taking care of us. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Preparing the table, abundance, he's protecting us, belonging, excellent. Thou anoints my head with oil, so we are, not, we are set apart as his very own, and we belong to the shepherd, yes, very good, excellent. My cup runs over, abundance again, you're right, his blessings are more than enough. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Kind of gave you a clue there. Very good. So he's always good and he's always merciful. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That we belong. It's goodness. It's love forever. 
Exactly. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for helping me with this today and for going back over the 23rd Psalm. I really appreciate it. Let's join together now in our prayer. Please repeat after me. God, you go before me to lead me. Behind us to protect us. God goes beneath us to support us. And beside us to be our friend. I will not be afraid. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I definitely learned something through our our kids. They they were really on top of it. We're going to respond now to the word through our profession of faith. So it was just in that section prior to, um, to the children gathering. So um, if you go to that profession of faith section in the, in the baptism before the children's time. Through baptism, we enter the covenant that God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. With the whole church, let us now rise up and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's remain standing as we sing together hymn number 743. 743. Oh God, you are my God. Be seated, everyone. Let us pray. Sovereign God, 
Let your word rule in our hearts and your spirit govern our lives until at last we see the fulfillment of your realm of justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now our first lesson today comes from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 1 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture and on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of God. Thank you. 
Amen. Now our sermon text today once again comes from Psalm 23. I'll be reading from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. (laughs) Why on earth would someone let me out from behind the wall? I'll tell you why. Because back in September, Jerry and I went on a little trip. And lo and behold, when we got back, I found my name on a a preaching list. (laughs) So um, the takeaway from that is that if you are part of a committee... Do not miss your meeting. (laughs) You never know what you're going to be volunteered for. All kidding aside, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am very humbled to be here this morning doing this. I really haven't talked too much to Keith about it, though. We really, other than a quick conversation in a hallway, we really have not discussed what I would or wouldn't be talking about. He did remind me that there were two tasks at hand today. One was that it is Christ the King Sunday, and the other is that I received the task of wrapping up the Psalm 23 series. He really only had one piece of guidance. You have to keep your sermon to 10 minutes. (laughs) I forgot my watch. So today is Christ the King Sunday, but what does that mean? If you're new to the Presbyterian way of doing things, we live life according to a liturgical year as do a lot of other denominations. The word liturgy comes from a Greek word meaning, a Greek word liturgia, which means a work on behalf of the people. One of the key benefits of marking time liturgically is that it always calls to mind the varied aspects, traits, and events in the life of one Jesus of Nazareth, helping us not just to celebrate one or two aspects of his character in life, but to understand more fully the entire mystery of Jesus from his incarnation and birth to the expectation of his coming in glory. The church's year helps use our own human understanding of time to celebrate this work. The official definition, according to the PCUSA mission website, is this. Christ the King Sunday is the conclusion of the Christian year when the church gives thanks and praise for the sovereignty of Christ who is Lord of all creation and is coming again in glory to reign. In other words, it marks the end of a yearly cycle whereby we celebrate Christ's Lordship as we look back over the past year through Pentecost, Ascension, Easter, Transfiguration, all while pointing ahead to his coming again, appearing in glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords for all time. Christ reigns supreme. 
But again, today, what does that really mean? I have to say, as your music director, this is one of my favorite days of the year. There is so much music to pick from. It's an easy job because there's so much and it's so suitable for the day. There are uplifting texts and majestic hymn tunes. Everything is usually upbeat rather than introspective. It's actually very similar to Palm Sunday in a way, at least musically. Apart from the fact that Palm Sunday, at least from one perspective, was really mostly about Jesus coming to save the Jews from the Romans. That Jewish sect that we refer to now as zealots just knew that Jesus was going to deliver them and establish his kingdom on earth right then. Christ the King Sunday is about Jesus establishing his kingdom forever. But again, what does that really mean? And how can I tie this to the 23rd Psalm in less than 10 minutes? Because that's really what you're wondering. <laughs> Here it goes. For me, it's very simple. The king of all time is also the good shepherd. I read something recently, and yes, it was on Facebook, but I felt it had value. So I, if you'll indulge me for a minute, I'd like to just read this to you. It's called The Bummer Lamb. That's Bummer, B-U-M-M-E-R. Every once in a while, a ewe will give birth to a lamb and reject it. There are many reasons she may do this. If the lamb is returned to the ewe, the mother may even kick the poor animal away. Once a ewe rejects one of her lambs, she will never change her mind. These little lambs will hang their heads so low that it looks like something is actually wrong with their neck. And their spirit is broken. These lambs are called bummer lambs. So unless the shepherd intervenes, that lamb will die, rejected, and alone. So can you guess what the shepherd does? He takes the little rejected lamb into his home, hand feeds it, keeps it warm by the fire. He'll wrap it up with blankets and hold it to his chest so the bummer lamb can hear his heartbeat. Once the lamb is strong enough, the shepherd will place it back in the field with the rest of the flock. That sheep never forgets how the shepherd cared for him when his own mother rejected him. When the shepherd calls for the flock, guess who comes first? That's right, the bummer lamb. He knows his master's voice intimately. It's not that the bummer lamb is loved more. It just knows the one who loves it and has experienced that love intimately, one on one. So many of us are bummer lambs. Sometimes for long periods of time. Sometimes it's, it may be for moments. But we've experienced it. We're rejected and we're broken but he is the good shepherd. He cares for our every need and holds us close to his heart so that we can hear his heartbeat. We may be broken, but we are deeply loved by the shepherd. Now, if Keith were here today, he would talk about formation and repetition and how those work hand in hand. If Mary were up here, Mary's favorite version of Psalm 23 is the King James Version, which you heard a second ago. Let's say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me, presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I believe this psalm illustrates what it means to be a Christian. To be Christ to another. To be a good shepherd to those around us. You may already know that the word Christian simply means little Christ. I don't know about you, but I struggle with that mightily. I want to always say and do the right thing, but it doesn't always work out that way. In my time here at WPC, some of you have seen me at my best. Some of you have also seen me at my worst. I believe it's what the Apostle Paul means when he says, For the desire to do the good lies close at hand, but not the ability. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. You know, there are actually churches whose main focus is on waiting for the second coming. That's their chief hub that holds their church life together. They wait for the second coming, waiting with bated breath. Because there have always been so many supposed signs that these are the last days. And so far, every single one of them have been wrong. Prophecy has never been about predicting the future. But it has always been about understanding the ethical principles at stake in one's lifetime. We don't need a crystal ball to understand biblical prophecy. Because the prophetic call is always always, always to love, and always, always, always to seek justice. Jesus taught his followers that the kingdom is at hand and to look for the sacred in the poor and the outcast. His disciple John summarized Jesus' teaching by saying, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. In other words, if we can't see Jesus in the poor and the outcast, we have yet to understand his core teaching. Seems to me there's no point in trying to predict the second coming when we haven't wrapped our heads around the first. You see, his kingdom already exists in you. And in me. It's in the person sitting next to you in the pew, as well as the person at the mall right now, or coming home from working a graveyard shift, or living on the streets, or on a golf course. It's in the student pulling an all nighter, or someone bagging groceries, or the doctors and the nurses in the ER, or someone driving a truck. It's in any person who seeks to emulate Jesus of Nazareth. And how do we do that? Jesus himself said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. So in practical terms, what does that look like for Webster Presbyterian? We're about to embark on a voyage as we seek new pastoral leadership. I'm not going to call it a transition because I don't see it that way. I see it as simply the next leg of our journey together. In Mel Gibson's movie, The Patriot, his character's commanding officer, Colonel Harry Burwell, kept telling him, stay the course, stay the course. I believe that's what we need to do now. So does your session. They are committed to the good work already started, 
while anticipating new ministry opportunities that both complement and supplement that work. We can stay the course and still have change. Staying the course allows for change while remaining true and authentic to who we are. My first Sunday at WPC to worship with this body was in April of 2001. I was a guest that day. I was actually in the throes of the interviewing process. So I showed up sort of incognito. They had interviewed me, so I guess in a way I was trying to interview them. (laughs) You. I sat, I walked in, it was when the the sanctuary was our fellow, when our fellowship hall now was our sanctuary. I walked in and I sat in one of the pews at the back and I saw this lady sitting there. She looked really, she looked nice, so I sat next to her. And they were, she knew they were searching for a music director, obviously. And after the service was over, she leaned over to me. And I should tell you at this point, Jerry is always telling me when we sit in the pews, you're singing too loud. <laughs> and I, I, I suppose I tend to, tend to do that. So this lady leaned over and said, welcome to Webster Presbyterian. My name is Sandy Mossman. You should join our choir. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> And the rest is history. That same day, a little, let me back up in time a little bit. That same day, um, I walked into the sanctuary, into the narthex over there. And it was, what do they call it, um, promotion Sunday? Where they recognized the children who were moving on to the next grade level in the upcoming um, school year. And it was the day that they handed out Bibles to the second graders. That was a gift that the church would give second graders at that time. Because uh, I guess Mary Swan had a really regimented uh, Bible study prepared for them as third graders. So they presented them. And the children took part in the worship that day. And as I walked through the doors, there was this sweet little girl that smiled. Had this beautiful smile and these twinkly little eyes. And she shoved a bulletin at me and said, welcome to church or welcome to Webster or something like that. And what what I didn't realize in that moment, what she didn't realize, is that there was both constancy and change going on together, side by side. Those things usually happen. It's not usually just a season of change or a season of us being who we are. But those things usually go hand in hand. She was being true to who she was as a member of that church. The change we didn't realize at the time is that one day she would be my (laughs) daughter-in-law. What Sandy Mossman didn't realize in that time that she knew there was change going on. There was a music director, but she was being authentic to who she was as a hospitable, welcoming member of Webster Presbyterian Church. Change, constancy, usually go hand in hand. A lot of you will remember our dear friend and brother, Greg Wilson. If you didn't know Greg, he was the former drummer in our ensemble up here and was just a real sweetheart of a man. Like most Christians, we conclude our prayers with the word, Amen, which is from a Hebrew word, and it means so be it. The uh, contemporary equivalent of that today would probably be truth. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Truth. Instead of amen, or I should say in addition to amen, Greg's life was punctuated with all in. Those of you who knew him, know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's exactly the kind of outlook we need as a congregation moving forward. So if you're not in that place, I would prayerfully encourage you to get to that place. 
Through the work of God's Holy Spirit, there are so many wonderful things going on here as we seek to live out our call to Christ's service as so eloquently expressed in our vision statement. I believe in my heart that WPC is on a terrific path. I was asked recently, probably because they knew Keith and I are the same age, and I think they were trying to figure my timeline out. They said, where will you go to church when you retire? It's right here, baby. So, all in? Amen. I think I went over 10 minutes. Don't tell Keith. Next Sunday is our first Sunday in Advent, and we start a new liturgical year. It's a common practice across Christianity to not say or sing Alleluia during Advent. So when you show up next week, uh, greet people with Happy New Year. Let us continue our worship and prayer. And now let us go to the Lord in prayer. And as we do, I would remind you once again that as we go through the flow of our prayers, that you can offer um, expressions of these aloud as they come forth from your heart, but also that um, just pause in the Lord in, the, in those moments of silence for how God is speaking to you. And, and, and you can have that, that moment and that word with God silently from within. Let us pray. Our shepherd satisfies our needs in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for the church. As you have made Christ the head of all, help us to live faithfully as his body continuing his mission in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for the earth. Let all the earth make a joyful noise to you, a song of praise to the rock of our salvation, for you are coming to reveal a new creation. Lord, In your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for all nations, Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia. Drive out those wolves in sheep's clothing who abuse the weak and scatter the flock. Come and save us. Bring justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for this community. Help us to see Christ among our neighbors, serving those who hunger and are thirsty, naked and lonely, sick or in prison, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we pray for loved ones. For Betty, John. Remember the people of your pasture, Rescue the lost, bind up the broken, heal the sick, and feed those who hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving shepherd, lead and guide us in green pastures and by still waters, in right paths and through dark valleys, until we feast with you in glory and dwell in your house forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
a real quick word about stewardship. Kevin had me, um, we talked yesterday and he asked if I would mention We all know Kevin? Okay. Um, he did also want me to tell you that we already have 25% gathered based on last year's, uh, based on the number of pledges that had come in at this point last year. Did I get that correct? Mm -hmm. 25%. So that's a really good start, but let's uh, keep up the good work. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let us offer our lives to the Lord. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all Above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what your remain standing. God of the harvest, you are continually planting the seeds of your love in our world and in our lives. As we bring our gifts to you, may they be seeds of your grace, peace, and hope planted deeply in our community. Amen. Now, as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Our final hymn is number 265, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun. We will sing all verses. blessing of the holy triune God who was and is and is to come, first and last, beginning and end, Alpha and Omega, be with you now and always. Alleluia.
What did I say about music for Christ the King Sunday? <laughs> Please rise. The service has ended. Now our service has begins. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.